Indian Chamber of Commerce has decided to have a large delegation to visit Nepal and explore possibilities of enhancing business ties and exploring potential area of cooperation and investment. As you know, Nepal, compared to India, is a small country, but it is not that small either. In terms of population as well, we have 30 million. Compared to Indian population, of course, it's small. But compared to many other countries, we are not small. We have a habit of spending. Nepali people like to spend. Compared to many other countries with comparable income. In that sense, Nepal itself has a good market. But at the same time, we'd like to see more investment coming to Nepal in the field of education, health, hydropower, and other related green energy investment. IT is another emerging sector in Nepal. Tourism, of course, has a great potential. You have huge population in India with growing income, especially under Prime Minister Modi's leadership. India is growing fast and growing in terms, compared to other countries, it is growing in a big way. So that is good news for Nepal. So we have four major potential areas for investment in Nepal. Hydropower, tourism, agribusiness, we have varied climatic zones with potential to grow anything under the earth. At the same time, there is a huge potential for investment in tourism-related activities. But I don't like to confine only to these four areas. I'm just pointing out four major areas which will take Nepal to a next step. <coughs> but there are, as you rightly pointed out, huge potential in health sector investment, educational investment, because of the climatic condition, all around the year, good climate. Therefore, as uh, Mr. Sarma rightly pointed out, there is a huge potential for developing the wellness center apart from health-related activities. Similarly, because more than 50% of Nepal's land is hills, if you exclude high Himalayas, and 25% flat lowland. That means all this 50% of our land, land is hill stations. So it's good for investment in health sector as well as educational institutions. So we like to you to explore all these areas for investment in Nepal and take our message to your 
you know, colleagues and friends who may not know Nepal that well. And sometimes there is a many misgivings about Nepal as well. Is Nepal is stable politically? Is there a good this uh, business climate favorable for investment? I will say with confidence that Nepal is in terms of favorable business climate as well. We are second in South Asia. So we will do better in coming days. With a new constitution in place, democratic constitution in place, inclusive constitution in place, I, I am confident that in coming days our business climate will Uh, increase. It will be better in coming days. And we are changing and reforming many outdated laws which are not conducive to investment. So in coming April 28-29, we are hosting investment summit in Nepal. And before that date, we are working on ways and means to improve investment climate in terms of our laws, in terms of our regulation, in terms of, uh, of our you know, behavior to, towards investors. We'll make sure that whatever complaint there may be, we'll remove that. Uh, therefore, we encourage you and through you to business and investor in India to look for long-term investment in Nepal. As you know, our almost two-thirds of our trade takes place between India and Nepal, our export as well as import. So we are a great trading partner. But from trading, we want to compensate our disproportionate import to Nepal, which is one to 10, one export, 10 import. So we'd like to see compensation in terms of investment in Nepal. So hydropower is one emerging field. We, have, we already have ecosystem of Nepali investors, hundreds of them, already investing in from few megawatts project to uh, they are now doing 250, even aiming for 300 Nepali people doing that. So there is a quite a bit of experience, and we have a good ecosystem. So anybody who wanted to join, collaborate with Nepali private sector in hydropower, we have that ecosystem already in place. With India recently deciding to buy up to 10,000 megawatt of hydro electricity from Nepal, so that it assured market. So there should not be any confusion about whether my or our investment will be secured. So it's already there. So that paves way for further investment in Nepal. In tourism sector, as I said earlier, we are working and giving priority to infrastructure good roads, all weather roads, connecting to production center and tourism center. That is our priority. So with this, so you will see hundreds of new touristic destination. Until now, because of the lack of infrastructure, good roads, 
we are not able to use those potential fully. Now we can do that with our priority on uh, road infrastructure. We already have three international airports. We want to utilize it fully. And we are working on the fourth international airport in Nijgarh, uh, which will be connected to Kathmandu uh, by expressway. And this expressway also we are uh, working on it, and very soon we'll complete it. So with this, I think uh, accessibility to Nepal will increase greatly. With that also, the cost of doing business will go down. Cost of trading, transaction cost will also go down with a good road, expressways, and things like that. Therefore, I urge this kind of interaction should, uh, uh, I think, in coming days will increase. FNCCI, as a largest private sector umbrella organization of uh, you know, business and industries, and there is a other two, Chamber of Commerce and uh, she and I. Uh, so I think if these three organizations together with Indian Chamber of Co Commerce and other uh, uh, organizations, if they can collaborate together, they will find ways to work together. And we'll, in the future, we'll have a better, you know, Coordination with the better coordination will come the greater confidence in investing and trading between two countries. Uh, as you are uh, Indian Chamber of Commerce, uh, we also like to see not only in terms of how much you can export to Nepal but how much we can export to India, trade to India, export to India. So from that perspective, an Indian Chamber of Commerce can be a great, great support. And I, I urge Mr. Dakar uh, to work on this area, how our product can be exported to India. India. Like hydropower, if we see that there is a market for Nepal's unique products, then uh, Nepali investors as well as Indian investors can invest not only to cater to Nepali consumers, but also to cater to Indian consumers. So that is what i like to see uh, from these uh, interactions uh, in coming in next session you will be i think discussing on uh, specific issues related to uh, you know promoting business between two countries uh, from that perspective also i'm very glad that uh, this uh, india nepal business forum is going to uh, be uh, uh, you know, uh, a good platform to enhance uh, the economic activities uh, between two countries. So at the end, uh, I'd like to see in coming investment summit, not only in terms of uh, number of people participating, but also in terms of real quality participation, which can translate into a re real investment in Nepal. We have potential, and we are confident. In coming days, we'll do much better. I don't, I don't think there is, no, there is any point comparing Nepal to Bhutan. It is like comparing Nepal's economy size to India's economy size. So with less than 1 million people in Bhutan, with 30 million in Nepal, and uh, bigger economic size, uh, we not only have this uh, hydropower sector, uh, 
uh, uh, which will contribute to our economic growth, but also many, many other uh, areas uh, of potential investment. Thank <laughs> you.